it's my first Zoom interview. I've never did it before, so we were struggling a bit with the technique, and now it's working. We're all good. Look back. Yes. If I, um, how would you introduce yourself to someone who has not yet met you? Um, I'm a guy of 40 years old uh, with a family, with uh, a wife and three kids uh, that have uh, been traveling a lot, I think, between Europe, Asia, uh, Armenia, Middle East. Uh, I love to uh, start projects. I love to uh, experience new uh, different type of projects from the French bakery to building houses for displaced people in uh, Artsakh, Armenia, to uh, agriculture. And um, yeah, that's it. Just, you know, I like to, uh, to go to places where people doesn't uh, usually go. <laughs> And uh, I love to interact with, uh, with the people I met uh, over there. And I think this is the thing that we have in common, right? Because we met in Bali. No, actually, did we meet in Bali? Did we meet in Brussels? I think the first time we met in Brussels. Okay, then but then I, I came back to Bali and then we met in Armenia, right? And I think we share the passion of traveling to those remote places in the world and to connect to the exactly. humans. Exactly. And we've been knowing each other for something like, I would say, a couple of years already. Yeah. And it was a pleasure meeting you. And now I think it's one of the first times I'm listening to you talking in English with this German yeah. accent. Yeah. yeah. Greg, where were you born? You were born in? I was born in Paris. And you oh. hold a French passport or also an Armenian one? I'm working on my uh, Armenian one, but unfortunately, it's such a nightmare to get it. So I'm only traveling with my French passport at the moment. Mm -hmm. And so one of your last travels brought you back to Armenia. We met there a couple of weeks ago. Correct, correct. And we tried to enter in this uh, war region mm -hmm. called uh, Artsakh, right? Uh, who uh, suffered from uh, a recent conflict with Azerbaijan. And uh, I finally managed to get there so I could, uh, you know, carry on my projects over there. And um, yeah, a lot to do, not easy, you know, because they're completely blocked from uh, all the borders and authorization and visa and under the, the Russian peacemakers. Um, it makes everything uh, more difficult, everything. But so just clear, really that's there. the mountain region, right? Between that is having its border to Azerbaijan, to Armenia. Yes. And it's in between. Go ahead. Armenia, Armenia, south, uh, southeast. Uh, this is li this little uh, territory called uh, Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh, which been disputed uh, with the Azerbaijan for like uh, thirty years now. And um, yeah, two wars happened. First war was in uh, 1990 and uh, last one uh, this year. And basically it's all about uh, claiming these territories and, and uh, pushing the aggressor and protecting the villages and everything. And obviously when all this happens, it makes the population move from both sides, actually. Uh, the Azeris has to move, and now it's the army and who has to relocate and everything. And that caused a lot of drama, as you can imagine, uh, for the people to, uh, to have their, their normal life, right? So, as I was just recently there, and I'll be back now here in Munich, I spoke to some friends. And mm. some people always ask me, what is the conflict about? What happened? Of course, there's a war, but what is it all about? Why is it so important? Um, and also a friend has asked me, yes, but the first war that happened in 1990, I mean, it were the Azerbaijani who were the first. So why did the Armenians go in? What would be your answer? How would you summarize the conflict? Is it even possible right now to summarize this conflict as it has been so long ongoing? And even when I was in Armenia, people have said it has never stopped the conflict, despite its public, in, in public hold, like it's, it's ended. So again, how would you summarize? What is the conflict about? Well, again, it's difficult to summarize this because it's a very ancient and a very complex geopolitical uh, uh, 
conflict. So there's a, I can refer to a different uh, publication who are going deep inside the, the details, but to, to summarize as much as I can, um, Armenians been living on those lands for um, hundred uh, thousand years. And you have proof of this with all this monastery and churches, Armenian churches that you can find in these territories, um, protected by UNESCO, uh, even though at the moment they're very at risk. Um, so imagine some kind of mountains in the middle of the Caucasus with a few different Armenian villages, people have been living there for a long time, and cohabitating with uh, Azer Azeris also, uh, you know, in different parts. Uh, under the Soviet Union, you know, there was no countries, it was uh, Soviets, and everyone had to follow the rules, and uh, no questioning. When the Soviet Union collapsed, all those countries raced, right, again and all the nationalistic uh, spirits came, came back, all the flags came back. And suddenly, in some kind of lands which were, you know, under the Soviet Union, under Moscow, uh, suddenly you see some flags coming up on the, the, the house or the, the, the roof or the different houses. And then it started to say, hey, uh, by the way, uh, so uh, when it collapsed, Stalin drew a line uh, so if the, 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 the Armenian villages were here, Armenia was here, he drew a line like this saying, all this is now Azerbaijan. The minority claimed to say, hey, uh, you forgot about us. Look, we are not Azeri, we are Armenian, we are Christian, we are not Muslim Azer Azerbaijan. Uh, we, want, we need to be uh, connected to Armenia, this is our country. But the way they did it, is it on purpose or not? I have big doubts that uh, it was not on purpose. They kind of uh, uh, separate all these minorities. The, you have another part which is called Narin Chevan. If you look at the map, it doesn't make sense. It looks like a, a Swiss Gruyere, right? You have Armenia here, Azerbaijan here, and a little piece of Azerbaijan on the other side of the country, and then Iran here and Turkey. So the, they completely cut the the the, the map in with uh, nonsense. Uh, obviously, you won't. They, they won't be able to. Uh, to hold those positions peacefully. And then um, once the, the, the nationalist uh, movement, the, the countries were raising, um, there have been some conflict segregation uh, uh, between Azerbaijan and Armenians. Basically, you know, you, you're a minority in our country, you need to follow our rules, you need to follow our religion, language, uh, political system and everything. You know, I as it's not a it's not a it's not a big surprise to say that Azerbaijan and Turkey are following the same political model. If you look at Turkey, all the minority, uh, it's not something they're helping. They they want more to assimilate them uh, than to give them their independence. In 1990, 1990 uh, a war started because the segregation against those minority, Armenian minority, was too strong. And uh, luckily, uh, surprisingly, this minority of Armenian, helped by the Armenia, managed to push out the, the attack. Mm -hmm. And so they, they created this Nagorno-Karabakh, not recognized by anyone, uh, for them to live by themselves in this region. They set up a government, they have a president, a prime minister, etc. And uh, for 30 years, they were living peacefully until Azerbaijan struck back. So they, they got a lot of uh, new weapons, um, very high tech drones, uh, chemicals that, you know, was just bombing all the population. Uh, so it was a, a very strange uh, war, uh, a very high tech war for uh, this kind of very uh, um, backwards region. Uh, it was uh, one of the, the, the last uh, drone technology. And in 40 days, the Azeri just got a lot of the, the territories. And now the Armenians, they have only 25% of their territories left. And they are under um, uh, Russian uh, peacekeepers. 
So uh, that's it. A lot of uh, villagers lost their village. Now they uh, living in different shelters. And one of my projects is to um, is to bring a new technology to set up new houses very quickly, and for them to start to live again. You know, they, it's a very rural uh, life. You mentioned uh, like the Armenians have something like 20, 25 percent of the space they had before the yeah. world year. And there was this little corridor that we could not enter when I was there, leading to the capital, right? And in the exactly. capital, you just spend a couple of days, and this is where you have started your projects. Yes, correct. And projects, as far as I can understand, are some cultural projects where you would like to enhance the Armenian culture, the way of living, bringing people together, and to create a community. Yes. So the first project is indeed this uh, uh, cultural center called uh, Paul Eluard. It's a, it's a francophonie uh, center where, uh, so it's linked with the French government and the local government mm -hmm. to uh, give classes, French classes for free for uh, any people from kids to adults, um, photography exhibition, painting exhibition, um, musicians, uh, you know, anything that deals uh, with art, uh, expression, culture. Uh, I'm hoping in September to organize uh, the first yoga festival. In I've Stephen seen Mexico. the message. So, so cool. Uh, yeah, because they, they're doing a lot of yoga and meditation. And I think they, especially at the moment, they need a lot of those activities. Um, so the, if, I the, the, the build if I can, I've also spoken to refugees, to women in Cherubon who had to leave their home there, yeah, mm. who have also seen like their husbands being killed in the war. So of course they are traumatized, they're having some of the kids with them. So when you now go into the war region, because it seems to be still a war region, how was when you have been there last week, how was the reaction of the locals when you, when you came and you explained to them, look, I'm going to build up something that has to do with art, the beauty of life, with photographies, even yoga. So how was the reaction? Was it, was it, was it what the people need the, need the most right now there? Or was it like, oh, that's a beautiful gift. It's something for the soul. It, it gives us some, some rich moments in life. Uh, that, that's a very good question. I'm very happy you, you asked it because uh, once uh, when I'm there and I meet and, and I'm with the people who doesn't think about, you know, leaving this area, they, they, they just want it. It's their home, right? They, 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 it's like you, I'm telling you, oh, now tomorrow you have to leave Germany and go to another country. You're like, but Craig, this is my home. I'm staying here. Uh, this is where I belong. This is where, you know, all my ancestors were. There's no way no, uh, someone's going to tell me to move because of the, the flag is different from mine. So, um, so when I'm there with them, it's life, right? And uh, the life is carrying on, even if it's uh, heavy, even if a lot of people uh, lost uh, different uh, brothers, sisters, dad, granddad, whatever. They, they just carry on their life. So when, I, when we talk about you know, uh, yoga or we talk about... Uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, pictures or paintings, mm -hmm. it makes them, you know, uh, feels like life is normal. Uh, they, 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 need, they need to feed themselves from all this. When I go there, uh, I'm bringing all the European culture with me, my uh, funniness, my craziness, you know. They need this, you know, where they, they cannot, uh, you cannot sit and, and only talk about the war 24-7. It's impossible, you go crazy. So I think, well, me, I'm a very uh, uh, strong adept of yoga and meditation, and I, and I think it helped me for all my life. So uh, to see all this new community starting to do yoga and breathing and, go and, uh, and meditation, of course it helped them. You know, it's a, it's a heavy pain, it's a heavy life, it's a heavy memories they have to have lost so much. They, they need to change their mind, they need to do exercise, they need to do breathing, etc. So when I'm there, it makes sense and everyone is happy and everyone wants to participate. And uh, it's, it was it's such a good exchange. When I, for example, I post about this uh, festival and then I got message from Armenians. It that, in the social media. I think I've seen it, right? Yes, correct. I just, you know, it's just an idea who came and that I'm trying to, to build now for, for real. But when I post it on the social media, 
uh, some I got some reaction, and it was uh, it was very interesting to see some French Armenian. You know, they they far away. They they live in uh, in Lyon, in the center of France, and they they they're in their house looking uh, at all this from their uh, computers and TV. And they were like, "Greg, this is insane. Uh, uh, we it's not the moment, you know, to do yoga. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, maybe tomorrow we will lose everything, you know." Which, which uh, really translates the, the gap there is between the country and the external uh, communities like the diaspora Armenian. So um, I'm going to go in there because some people don't know what it is all about. So there are 3 million people living in Armenia and there are about 10 million people living out of Armenia. And when right. I was traveling the country, it was amazing because when I spoke to the diaspora, again, those people that lived abroad, who have a lot of financial means, I would even say, there is a gap between the locals. When I spoke to the locals, they had the Russian influence. There was no English at all. They were very, very, how to say, without going into judgment, which I do not mean here, very basic. Like we have a lot of farmers doing the daily life, right? And so the diaspora are more sophisticated and they are very keen on supporting their home country. So when I understand you correctly, you said, for those who are living out of Armenia, it's difficult to understand what you are doing right now, going into a conflict war zone, where apparently the war is still ongoing, or at least the conflict is ongoing. You don't know about the capital in the middle um, of Artsakh, whether it can be or remains Armenian. You never know what brings the future, right? And so you could feel that there was critics coming from abroad. Is this what you tried to say? Yes, exactly. Uh, and, and I don't think it's only uh, about the, the Armenian diaspora. I think it's any country mm -hmm. that has a strong, uh, an ancient, a very old uh, uh, diaspora outside. Obviously, you know, there's, uh, there's a cultural gap, there's a, even the language can change and everything. So that's, that's one of the crises uh, Armenian people are uh, experiencing at the moment is this uh, culture shock between the country, Armenia, like you say, with the, the Russian influence mm -hmm. uh, and the diaspora who has been very occidentalized, uh, like me, for example. And the only way uh, to connect and reduce this gap is uh, to meet each other, to, to do projects together, to do yoga, do anything you want to do together, to, to break this, uh, this, uh, this distance. Uh, and uh, and work together and I think like you say uh, we are not so many people in the world so if already we are separated because you say three million uh, and ten here but in the ten you have uh, maybe one from Russia uh, half uh, in uh, from France some from America and all of them already it's a different culture you see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we've been fractured in uh, in this uh, different diaspora due to the uh, you know, it goes back to the um, to the genocide, the Armenian genocide, where all this Armenian has to spread into the world to find a new place to live uh, after the, the 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 Armenian genocide. So it's a it's a very complex uh, story, but uh, I think it's very important if we want to have a better future to start talking to each other, to open ourselves to uh, other countries. That's why. The cultural center. I hope to invite uh, French artists, uh, German artists, Belgium artists, uh, Americans. Anyway, any uh, people that will come to uh, to to enrich the the, the, the well, both uh, both relations. May I ask because I've seen some of your of your building plans. They're really huge. Like it's it's a massive project, right? It's not just a small coffee uh, at the corner. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, it, is, it is. Where do you get all the financial needs from? Who's financing that for a country that is in a huge conflict? Um, so the the funding started before the war, when uh, everyone had hope and everything. The, the sun was brightening and everything. Uh, the funding are, is coming from the French government, the local government. And we have some kind of, uh, we call it all Armenian funds. It's some kind of uh, uh, charity uh, funds uh, through all the diaspora and the, the, the Armenian country uh, who funded this building. So yes, like you say, it's a, it's a big building. 
it's good because we're going to be able to host, um, you know, proper festival or uh, events or exhibition and even accommodate the artists that will come. Uh, but on the other side, of course, um, you know, we need to make sure that we will be able to, uh, to run the, the center and make it sustainable with uh, uh, different ways to, uh, to finance it. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned also the genocide. Um, I'm German, obviously, right? And when someone talks about the genocide, you still feel, I could feel it like, oh, Jesus, this is a huge expression. You're German, yeah. you know German history? Wow. So when I was in the plane from Kiev, Ukraine, going to Armenia, I was after five minutes in a huge political discussion on the left and on the right with two Armenians. And it was, I was just listening. It was, it was, it was like more listening. And here on the left, he said about, it was asked with the genocide. We had it first, which was like, oh, wow, there is, is there a competition when it comes to genocides? Like, wow. <laughs> so there is this huge, huge, huge drama that happened in your past. At the same time, it was not only you people to whom it happened, the genocide. It happened to, for example, Jewish as well. The Jewish, and now I dare say it, are very well um, aware of what happened and they, they managed to somehow structure themselves to be after Second World War in different positions, that's my personal view, all around the world in key positions, to make sure it will never happen again to them. And for me, coming to Armenia, I could feel some parallels when I was in Israel from the dynamic from this inner feeling of being hurt and the ask for justice. If you compare the Armenian people with the Jewish people, to what extent do you see similarities? And to what extent you can see we can learn from each other? To what extent do you see we are competing? If I may use this word in this context. Um, well, I think the, the word uh, competing, it's, it's very sad, but I, 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 I understand what you're saying. And sometimes we kind of feel this competition, which is ridiculous. Um, there is definitely comparison and similarity. And when I meet, and I have many uh, Jewish uh, friends in, in Paris, for example, uh, there's, there's always something that links us because, you know, we, we had the same... Uh, then the condition were not the same, but uh, the, you know the, the, all the after effects is the same. You know, it's always something you. It's heavy to talk about. It's always something uh, uh, you cannot open up and talk uh, about it with your parents or grandparents, because in both sides it's very fresh. You know, the the, the Armenian genocide side was uh, happened in nineteen uh, uh, fifteen. Uh, the the, the uh, little after we had the Jewish genocide. So it's still very fresh in our culture and it's something that we carry and that we uh, give to our kids and et cetera, et cetera. Um, we see that the Armenian genocide is getting recognized by more and more country, finally. Uh, I think the, the German parliament recognized it. Um, recently, America recognized it, you know, so um, it is important to recognize it first for the Armenian people, just to, you know, to, to, to acknowledge what happened at least, you know, uh, and then secondly, for the rest of the world, for this kind of things not to happen again. This, we cannot uh, say that we are developed countries or uh, unions or uh, intellectual people. If we, today, we still have these kind of things happening uh, unfortunately, you know how it works, right? Uh, if you do something and it's not punished, then people say, oh, look, uh, they've done all this. It would, they were not punished. Why don't we do it? So it's a long process. It's a long fight. Uh, it's getting, I hope, in the right direction. It will be amazing if uh, Turkey uh, will recognize it. That will be uh, such a good relief. Mm -hmm. and, finally we, yeah. Yeah, and finally, we could move on and uh and, and and start you know uh, building the future uh, because until today 
we cannot build anything because the base is is rotten uh, the base has blood uh, uh, in the basement so it's very difficult to open up the border and start making some uh, uh, I don't know trade unions or anything that will push the economy, local economy, for the people to live better. It's still in, in blockers. It's still in border are closed and no discussion, aggressivity and everything. Um, so yeah, I think um, it's very important to to do it. Uh, in Rwanda also, there's been a genocide that still haven't been recognized. So Armenians are not the the only one. Um, so it will be a huge move, you know, if we if we could uh, finally recognize it and move on. You remember when we met in Sherwin, maybe you remember, it was after breakfast, we had breakfast together and I asked, Craig, what is it? What is your motivation? Because you mentioned it were either your grandparents or even the parents of your grandparents who were, who were living in Turkey and had to leave because of the genocide. It was the yeah. parents of your grandparents? Yeah? It was Yes. So I was wondering, perfect. Jesus, you're so far away from this country. You know, yeah. you were growing up, living in 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 Europe. You you married an Armenian woman. Yeah. So you are very much into the Armenian culture, but it has been decades ago. You were linked to the country, or even mm -hmm. like generations ago, you were linked to your country. And maybe I have asked this question from my perspective because as a German nationalism yeah being proud of your country yeah. or even like as you do like supporting it so much despite yeah. that you are so far away from the country time-wise geographically yeah family-wise it was astonishing for me with my experience so what would you say what is your motivation because at the end you were not just transferring money to Armenia you are having three kids of yourself. You went into a war region where you could have been killed, maybe, because there are a lot of mines in the, mm. yeah, everywhere around. It's dangerous. Right? So, so why did you accept that risk to support that region so far away? Well, that's a, that's a deep question. For the end. <laughs> it's a very deep question. And, uh, you know, I, I feel I'm French. You know, I feel I'm a French citizen. My main culture is French. And like you say, all my French friends, they've been seeing me going there uh, instead of going to Ibiza with them or to uh, Greece for holidays. I'll, I'll be going to Armenia, which like you say, you know, it's not my country. I don't recognize myself 100% with those people because they have this Russian influence and etc. I don't have family. The language is different. Is different. Uh, there is no way I can set up a company, so there, there's no profit uh, motivation uh, behind this. Uh, but still, I go there. Uh, why? Uh, that's uh, the, uh, my whole life questions. Why? I think because uh, I, I kind of um, I'm aware of this identity, this Armin identity. It will be so easy to just close the door and say, "Oh, I'm French." I go to Spain on holidays, I go to Italy and, you know, uh, but I don't know. I, I think I, um, uh, I value this uh, Armenian culture, this Armenian identity. Uh, I value this uh, relationship I have with the land, with, uh, uh, you know, the old spirits, the old uh, stones, the, 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 the mountains. It's so uh, heavy in terms of history, in terms of uh, uh, emotions, in terms of uh, uh, relationships with people, which is unique. And I, I, I feel it's unique. And not just because I'm, I'm an Armenian, but because of the whole story that happened. And uh, I just don't want this to disappear. Uh, and uh, if I can help, so I don't like the word help because I, uh, I'm who I am to go to army and say, oh, I'm going to help those people. But if I can participate, collaborate with them to, uh, to, to make things better and uh, more fun, I want to bring fun. You know, we're always talking about, oh, the poor people, the displaced people, yeah. uh, we need to provide them some food, uh, shelters, houses. Yes, we're doing all this work, 
but I want also to this experience to be fun. When when I I want to bring some friends, uh, uh, families, or my kids or my wife there, it has to be fun. I want I want them to feel, uh, oh, let's do something in a in a nice uh, environment because it's beautiful. It's all nature and mountains everywhere, and meet people and have fun together. So uh, that's it. I think it's some kind of uh, journey I have in my life uh, that I. I know it's an effort. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy, a lot of money that I'm spending there. But it's some kind of journey, spiritual journey, I'll say. Um, and who also fit me a lot. Because when I come back from these trips, I feel so much rich, you know. Instead of uh, going to the beach uh, in Spain for one week and come back with my tan. So, I don't know. I, I think I'm, I'm asking for life for more than just uh, you know some bathing on the on the beach, um, so I'm feeding myself from all these uh, activities and relationships, and uh, because it's strong, it's uh, it's very powerful. You know. Thank you so much. Last question, because two of us we need to run now. If you would have one wish for the region, for the war region, what would it be? To establish peace, if ever possible acceptable for all sides yeah peace security um and let you know those people to live uh, to live happy and uh, be able to build their house to set up their businesses to take their kids to school you know that we're really talking about the the basics of the basics Mm -hmm. um, have access to water, be able to uh, grow fruits, vegetables, because it's a very rural uh, area. And um, and that's it, clean the old past. I know it's, it's, a, it's a huge effort, but uh, uh, start fresh, accept each other, you know, bother to bother, and stop fighting, stop trying to uh, kill, steal, uh, manipulate, and all this. Well, uh, it's, uh, that will be amazing. I don't know how long it will take, but uh, it will be amazing. So maybe let's uh, not give up hope. And no, no, of course not. Meet next time in your cultural center. Yes, yeah. you're, more than, you're more than welcome. Uh, now the borders are getting more open, so it will be soon more, very more uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be happy to organize, to invite some uh, German speakers or... German artists uh, and people over there, they will, they'll jump on them, you know, they'll, they'll be so happy to, to meet uh, new people. I can uh, just say the line because when I was traveling there, I had the most beautiful conversations and talks and people were so open and so friendly, really. They really yeah. long for inspiration, for motivation, for connection. Crack. If, if, if there's something uh, that I have to be proud of the Armenian population, it's their welcome. Mm. It, was, it was very warm. Yeah. I received gifts, people running after me, giving some, some tea for me when I left. I stayed at homestays and they were amazing. They were cooking at night for me. It was really, really, really very, very hard touching. I'm so happy you made this experience. <laughs> well done. Well Thank done. you so much, Craig. So Thank we stay, of course, in touch. I will yeah. provide some links in the show notes mm -hmm. and also maybe some more information about how to support your project. Hmm? Yeah, sure. This would be good. And so, listeners, thank you so much for having been here with me. And of course, first of all, with Crack and me on the Human Project. See you soon. Thank you, thank you so Bye. much. It was Bye. very kind of you sharing so much. Bye.